Okay, this is integration by substitution, part two. So here we have two examples that we're gonna start with, and it says integrate this integral here. So first thing I have to do, step one, is to ident excuse me, identify u and du. So since this is inside parentheses, I'm gonna say that is u. And then if I wanna find du, I need to take the derivative of this, which would be 4x dx, okay? Now what I wanna do is I wanna substitute 4x dx in here. However, you notice when I wanna do this, this part's gonna become the u, so I'm gonna have u to the fifth, and then this part should become something with du. But if you notice, I have x and dx. I do not have this four in front here. However, it's just a constant. And when it comes to constant multipliers, you can always put in a constant multiplier. You just have to make sure that you don't change the value of the problem. So if I want to put in a four, I also have to multiply by one fourth so that really I'm just multiplying by one, which changes nothing, okay? So it'll keep the same integral, it's just cleverly manipulated so that I have all the pieces that I want, okay? So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this side by one fourth, and I'm gonna multiply this side of the equation by one fourth, but as we know here, four times one fourth is just one. So I end up with dx dx all by itself. Now I know what to substitute in for x dx. Instead of x dx, I'm going to substitute in 1 fourth du. Now we know by our integration properties that we can take out the constant multiplier, so we end up with this integral. And that is just nothing more than the power rule applied, so we get u to the 6 divided by 6 plus c. And then if I simplify that there, I get u to the 6 over 24 plus c. Now if I follow through with the last step of integration by substitution, I need to back substitute. The problem was not given to me in terms of u's. The problem was given to me in terms of x's, which means I need to plug back in what u is so that this could be in terms of x's. So u is 2x squared plus 3. So this becomes 2x squared plus 3 raised to the 6th power over 24. Now you could expand this, which would be very long and ugly, um, and simplify it if you could, but I wouldn't. I would just leave it there as is and type that in the computer and they will accept it. Now example three is a little bit similar. So again, I like to rewrite radicals and you definitely don't wanna have variables in your denominator. So I'm gonna rewrite this as x, which is the x in the numerator, times eight minus x squared, one half because it's a radical and a negative because it was in the denominator. Keep my dx there on the side. So now it's a little bit, if it wasn't obvious before, it's a little more obvious now as to what um, u is going to be. So u is going to be what's in the parentheses, eight minus x squared, and du is going to be the derivative of this. Derivative of eight is zero, the derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x, and of course we have to tag on the dx because we're differentiating with respect to an unknown variable. Um, now we can substitute, so we can change all the variables of this expression. Now we do have a problem again. I can simply, um, and I'm forgetting my equal signs, these are important, these equal signs are very important because they are what makes each step relevant to this problem, okay? Without those equal signs, what you're doing is all for nothing, okay? So when you're showing your work on, um, say, a test, your work does have to mathematically make sense, okay? So it's okay to have, you know, your little side work on the side, um, but what you're doing has to follow logic. So there would be no purpose in talking about this integral if it's not equivalent to the original integral, okay? So you make sure you're not forgetting your equal signs. It's very easy to do, but if you go back through your paperwork real quick, 
um, and put them all back in there, then they should be good. Okay, so here I'm gonna go back in and u is going to become eight minus x squared. So this is going to become my u. Now the x and dx need to get replaced as well. But with what? I have x and dx here, but I have this extra multiplier here, negative two. So applying the same logic as example two, I can multiply both sides by negative one half. And if I multiply this side by negative one half, the negatives will make a positive and the twos will reduce, just giving me one x dx. Now I know what to substitute for the x and the dx. I'm going to substitute du and a negative one half multiplier. Now, when you're multiplying, it doesn't matter what order they get multiplied, which is why I chose to put the du here and the negative one half here in the front, okay? So if I keep going, and I can mark this over here as my side work so that it's not confused with the rest of my problem, right? Um, take out my constant multiplier. Let's apply our power rule. So we get u to the positive one half divided by one half or multiplied by the reciprocal. Dividing by one half is the exact same thing as multiplying by two over one. And then we can't forget our constant multiple there. Um, our constant of integration, I'm sorry. So these twos will reduce, leaving me with negative u to the positive one half exponent plus c. Again, I'm not completely finished until this is in terms of x's. So I do have to back substitute and plug in what is equivalent to u. So u equals eight minus x squared, which means this should be eight minus x squared raised to the one half plus c. And then if I wanted to rewrite it, which I'm not required to, but if I wanted to, that would be a square root. This would be my final formal answer. Okay, another thing that you need careful with when you're showing your work on say a test is that when you take the integral as soon as you've applied the integration rule you must write the plus c on top of that once you've taken the integral and you've applied the integration rule do not continue writing this s symbol that's to tell you take the integral but once you've done that you don't need this symbol anymore okay so it's basically like once you've taken the antiderivative, this becomes the plus C, if you want to think about it like that. Um, but there should be no, no uh, point where your equation will have both this S symbol and the plus C in the same line. Okay, they should not exist together. It's one or the other. Either you're going to take the integral or you have already done it. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're showing uh, your work for these problems on the test.